very much to Aubrey and the Foundation for inviting me. Um, all of you folks are very hungry at the moment, so I'll try to be fast. Uh, we have a program at MIT that we very modestly call Panacea, and as the name suggests, our goal is to be able to cure all infectious diseases with very broad spectrum therapeutics. We're starting small, we're trying to cure all viruses at the moment. Uh, so we've looked at several different panacea therapeutics, but the one that's furthest along is something called DRACO. I love acronyms. Um, and uh, DRACO Athens was known for executing citizens who transgressed his laws, which was rather harsh but quite effective. Uh, so our DRACO is designed to execute any cells that become infected uh, with virus. And uh, this uh, should <coughs> eliminate the viral infection and uh, save everybody else. So here's the answer, double-stranded RNA activated caspase oligomerizer. It took longer to come up with the acronym than the actual idea. <laughs> <laughs> it works on the principle that uh, almost all viruses, uh, at least as far as we know, make long double-stranded RNA, whereas healthy human cells only make short uh, double-stranded RNAs. Uh, both DNA and RNA viruses do do this. Uh, so we've created our DRACOs as chimeric proteins uh, by splicing together uh, different domains. On the front end of the DRACO, uh, we have uh, domains that will recognize double-stranded RNA, and these are borrowed from several different natural proteins, including protein kinase R. On the back end, uh, we have protein domains uh, borrowed from natural proteins that will trigger apoptosis, but only uh, if they find viral RNA. Uh, so the DRACO can go inside all the cells in your body, and uh, if it doesn't find any viral RNA, it doesn't do anything, it hangs out for a while, and eventually goes away. But if it does find viral double-stranded RNA, multiple DRACOs can bind to that long double-stranded RNA, and that enables the back end of the DRACO then uh, to uh, recruit and cross and activate uh, endogenous uh, procaspases to trigger apoptosis. Uh, so this should be effective against a broad spectrum of viruses. We're not looking for any kind of specific sequence of RNA here. It's uh, just general structure of double-stranded RNA. Uh, we're triggering apoptosis downstream of our uh, viruses generally block, uh, and of course viruses need the host cell alive in order to replicate. So it should be a very broad spectrum. Uh, it should not activate in uninfected cells, so it should not harm uninfected cells. That's the idea, anyway. Uh, to begin with, we didn't really know uh, which uh, proteins would work best, uh, so we've tested a number of different structures. We're still testing uh, several. We've looked at different uh, double-stranded RNA detection demands, uh, including protein kinase R that I showed, uh, E3L, uh, borrowed from pox viruses, uh, RNase L, uh, and others. Uh, we've looked at several different apoptosis induction demands, uh, including uh, FAD, uh, APAF uh, from both humans and uh, murine APAF, uh, gas bases, uh, several others. Uh, and we've also put uh, transduction demands on these to get these chimeric proteins inside cells. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, along with the uh, chimeric proteins, the DRACOs have created controls, uh, including just the front end, just the back end, the complete DRACO with point mutations can activate it. So we have a lot of controls here. Uh, in order to get these chimeric proteins inside cells, of course it's not generally easy to do that. Uh, other researchers have uh, solved that problem for us. Uh, Stephen Dowdy, Paul Winder, other researchers like that uh, have developed uh, several uh, different types of protein transduction demands. Uh, here, uh, in a paper by Stephen Dowdy, they were put on beta-gal and injected into live mice. This was a tap delivery tag, uh, and it penetrated into all the various tissues in the mice, uh, even to the brain, so it even penetrates the blood-brain barrier. Uh, we simply borrowed these tags and uh, put them on a Draco, so we're producing Dracos with any of three different delivery tags, uh, TAP, PDB4, which Dowdy designed based on the natural TAP from HIV, uh, and Paul Winter's polyarginine tag. Uh, we produce the uh, proteins in E. coli, we purify from the E. coli, and we end up with Draco proteins, uh, which should freely uh, penetrate inside cells. Uh, this shows that it indeed uh, does go inside cells. Uh, these are fluorescent labeled Dracos before and after addition to uh, fibroblasts. Uh, what's interesting is that with these delivery tags, the Dracos go everywhere inside the cells. Uh, the nucleus lights up very brightly, uh, but there's also quite a bit of Draco elsewhere in the cell, in the cytoplasm. Uh, so this should be effective against a virus that they're replicating in either the nucleus or in the cytoplasm. Uh, it penetrates very rapidly. In as little as 10 minutes, uh, we can see uh, Draco accumulating inside cells by Westerns. 
Uh, it seems to plateau after a couple of hours. One strain goes inside the cells, it will persist for several days uh, in a detectable fashion. Um, we've shown separately we can even pretreat cells uh, with Draco up to at least 11 days before infection and then wash the cells to remove external Draco. Uh, and those pretreated cells uh, are resistant to virus even after 11 days. Uh, we've uh, shown that Draco induces apoptosis as intended. Uh, so here we're measuring apoptosis uh, using a mega uh, luciferase assay that's looking for you know, caspase 3 or caspase 7 activation. Uh, with untreated cells, uh, there's uh, very little apoptosis going on. Uh, with Draco, with the three delivery tags, uh, the level of apoptosis is in the background. Uh, if we add uh, just uh, double stranded RNA, probably I probably see double stranded RNA from sigma, uh, then essentially uh, there's no significant apoptosis. Uh, if we have the double stranded RNA and any of the three Dracos, we get large amounts of apoptosis. Uh, we can block that apoptosis with can caspase inhibitors, but most importantly, we can quickly block that apoptosis with a caspase 9 inhibitor. And uh, these specific uh, Dracos are designed to activate caspase 9. Uh, using their APAP domains, uh, so we can show that the Dracos are working as intended. Uh, this shows how it actually works against virus. Uh, these are normal human lung fibroblasts uh, and rhinovirus 1B. Uh, here's what the cells are supposed to look like. Uh, if we add uh, 300 PFU of rhinovirus and wait for a few days, uh, the cells are all floating belly up like dead goldfish. Uh, if we uh, add uh, just one dose of Draco, either before or after infection, uh, the cells look essentially as if they've never seen any virus. Uh, here, the negative control is very important, show Draco is working for the right reason. Uh, we can add uh, E. coli extracts, and so producing the Draco in E. coli, we wanted to show that the E. coli weren't producing uh, some kernel secret recipe, is actually the magic ingredient here. Uh, so we can add tenfold more purified extracts using exactly the same protocols, but with no Draco present, and it doesn't do anything to save these cells. So we can add just the front end of the Draco by itself, which we can add double the RNA, it doesn't do anything. Just the back end doesn't do anything. Uh, we can even add both halves of the Draco at the same time, and as long as they're not fail at length, uh, there's uh, no cure for the common cold. Uh, so it's only when they're linked you get this kind of effect. Uh, this is just quantitative data showing the same thing. Uh, Draco, with any of the three delivery tags, the PDD, the TAPS, or the arginine delivery tag, uh, gives a very good cell survival in the face of viral challenge. All the negative controls are quite negative. Uh, this is that same thing, but uh, with a twist. So here are cells uh, that are treated uh, with Draco, and uh, you can see that the ones that got Draco are doing much better than the controls. We wanted to see if Draco was really eliminating the virus or temporarily suppressing the virus in the cells. Uh, so for this group of uh, cells, uh, we waited until we started looking fairly pretty, um, and then three days after infection, we removed the medium containing all the Draco and uh, let the cells go for another week to see if the virus would come back or if Draco had killed all the virus infected cells. Uh, so here they are a week later. Uh, the Draco treated cells are still looking very pretty. The virus never came back. So presumably Draco actually killed uh, all of the infected cells. Uh, we can show that more directly uh, by measuring viral titers, run virus titers from these cells. Uh, and uh, untreated cells, or cells that get negative controls, have very high uh, titers of virus in uh, the cell soup. Uh, those treated with Draco have undetectable levels of virus. Uh, that's using TCA 50 assays uh, for rhinovirus and NHLS. It's a completely different assay, same result, uh, Brahma bunya virus uh, in uh, viral cells by qPCR. Again, uh, cells uh, that uh, receive no treatment or negative controls, have very high levels of virus in cell soup, and uh, those that get to Draco have undetectable levels of virus. Uh, we've found that the uh, EC50 for the Draco is around two or three nanometer, which is quite low by the standards of antiviral drugs. Uh, and remarkably, uh, this seems to be about the same for all the viruses we've tested. So here are three uh, very different viruses, uh, one DNA virus, two RNA viruses, uh, and yet, uh, Drake has about the same EC50 for all of them. So as long as you're above that, uh, you can get very good cell survival uh, in the face of viral challenge, and below that, um, the uh, virus wins. We can cure the cells uh, if uh, Drake was given either before or after infection. 
Uh, here, cells were treated uh, 24 hours uh, before infection with one dose of Draco. It was quite effective. This is nearing abnormal in a DNA virus. Uh, and uh, we can go out at least 72 hours after infection. Uh, the Draco is still quite effective. Uh, this is a fairly slow virus. It takes about a week or two for it to really uh, run its full course in the cells. Uh, of course, uh, once the virus has proceeded, <coughs> has infected all the cells, if you treat the Draco at that time, uh, Draco will simply kill all the infected cells. Um, and of course, once all the cells are dead, uh, Draco can't bring the cells back to life. But I think there's somebody else here working on that. <laughs> uh, we've gotten uh, very similar results. All the viruses we've tested um, for the rhinoviruses, the other viruses, how we can treat it before or after infection in cells. Uh, just some of our other data. Uh, this is thylogenine encephalomyelitis, basically the mouse version of polio. Uh, the mice were very excited when they did this one. Um, so here's what the cells are supposed to look like. Uh, with the virus, they're quite dead. With negative controls, they're quite dead. And uh, with the Draco, they look as if they've never even seen any virus. Uh, same thing with the dengue hemorrhagic fever virus here on uh, treated cells. Uh, same thing with Amalfari arenavirus, sort of the scanned in to Lassa and Hunan, and several very nasty viruses like that. Uh, very good cell survival when treated with Draco, so the three delivery times. To summarize the cell data, we've shown so far that Drake is effective against 15 different viruses. Uh, these come from very different families, they have very different genomes, uh, single-stranded RNA positive sense, negative sense, uh, double-stranded RNA. Uh, DNA viruses also make uh, double-stranded RNA. Uh, some have envelopes, some don't. They come from very different species, uh, humans, mice, uh, bats. Uh, they use very different receptors to get inside cells. And yet Drake has been effective uh, so far against all of these. And I'm not aware of anything else out there that can do that. We've also shown that it's effective and non toxic in a whole variety of cell types, uh, most of human, but also monkey and mouse cells uh, from a variety of different tissues. Uh, most of these are primary cells, not immortalized. We have some cell lines here as well. And Draco works as non toxic in all of these. Uh, people always see this list and they ask what about neurons. Uh, we haven't tested neurons with the Draco. We ordered neurons from the same company. Uh, we provided uh, several of these other cell types and they came into our lab. Uh, and before we could add the Draco, before we could add any virus, the neurons just died. So I'm not sure quite what that says about the environment that it might be to build brain cells. Oops, this can be a problem. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we're still testing in cells, but we've also moved into cute little furry animals. And uh, initially we tested the toxicity and uh, pharmacokinetics uh, in two mouse trials. This is again at MIT, Vision for Parent Medicine. Uh, and uh, so in this case, uh, there was no toxicity. We could inject mice with as much grape as we practically could, volume-wise. Uh, there were no apparent effects in live mice. Uh, at necropsy, there was no apparent damage in the tissue. Uh, we moved on to pharmacokinetics. Uh, we've been testing uh, Draco administration by several different routes. Uh, we can give it IP into the abdomen, uh, intranasally, uh, intravenously, uh, and uh, depending on which route we use, and depending on which of these delivery tags we put in the Draco, we see somewhat different form of genetics. Uh, we don't fully understand that yet, but here are the selections from the data. Uh, so with IP administration, uh, Draco goes systemic. Uh, we can get large amounts of Draco in all the tissues we tested, uh, and in the best cases, it will persist at least 48 hours after one dose, so you don't have to shoot up the mice every hour. Um, and the mice are very grateful for that, and the researchers are very grateful for that. Um, in uh, intranasal administration, it goes into the lungs, and only the lungs, because they're high levels, and again, persists for over 24 hours. Uh, here are some of our typical mouse volunteers. Uh, so this is a trial with H1N1 influenza, uh, one LD50, uh, eight days after infection. Uh, here's a control mouse, no virus, and injected with a buffer solution, essentially saline solution, PBS, as negative control. Uh, typical mousey looking mouse. Uh, here's one of our mice that got uh, Draco injected uh, several days and no virus. And uh, you can see that there are no apparent side effects here. No flowers for allergen on. Uh, the mouse didn't turn big and green and angry or anything. Uh, here's a mouse that got uh, one LD50 of the flu and only buffered for treatment for several days. Uh, eight days later, it's lost a lot of body weight compared to the other mice. The fur is ruffled, it's much less active than the other mice. And it's seriously contemplating a different career. Uh, and here's a mouse that got uh, the flu, but also was given Draco. And again, it's healthy and active. In fact, it's about to jump off the scale here while we're trying to weigh it. 
<laughs> here weight averages of groups of those mice. Uh, in this case, uh, mice were given just one dose of Draco, uh, with the same dose infection, uh, intranasally. That one dose made a very large difference. Uh, we have a group of eight Draco-treated mice, a group of seven buffer-treated mice. Uh, the buffer-treated mice all uh, gradually lost weight, as you saw from one mouse, uh, got quite sick. Uh, and after 10 days, uh, they lost about 30% of their body weight. Um, so imagine if you as a person were so sick from a virus, you lost 30% of your body weight. Um, either you'd be very, very sick or you'd be a supermodel. Um, <laughs> so here, uh, they either died or they had to sack them by MIT rules. The Draco-treated mice actually gained body weight and now lived happily ever after, uh, at least until we dissected them. Uh, we wanted to look at the effect on viral titers too. So we picked uh, three left contestants uh, from each group and uh, mentioned the lung viral titers. The Draco-treated mice had about 300-fold less uh, virus in the lungs than the untreated mice. Uh, this was with, again, one intranasal dose of Draco given on day zero. We've gotten similar effects with Draco given IP for given several days in a row. Uh, we have less data, but still intriguing data on other viruses. And this is more recent data. Uh, in preliminary trials uh, with Takaribe coronavirus, uh, this is just looking at survival. Uh, here, a group of 24 Draco treated mice mostly survived. Uh, all but one of the buffer mice uh, died uh, from the virus. And importantly, in uh, day nine uh, serum viral titers, uh, Draco again reduced the amount of virus, in this case by over 30 fold. Uh, this was with IP administration, uh, both with the virus on day zero and an IP administration of Draco uh, for three days in a row. Uh, similar results with Amapari arena virus. Uh, this is kind of an interesting virus here. Uh, we gave one healthy 50. Uh, all the Draco treated mice survived. Uh, the uh, buffer-treated mice uh, succumbed to essentially hemorrhagic-type symptoms uh, in the mice. And uh, then finally, our guama bunya virus, uh, which is sort of distant related to Hanta virus, if you will. Uh, very small trial, uh, six Draco-treated mice, and four out of the six survived. Uh, buffer-treated uh, mice all died very rapidly from this virus. It's quite an aggressive virus in mice. Uh, and looking at the viral titers, both liver and serum, uh, Draco seemed to knock down the viral titers by about 200 in this case. So I'd like to thank the uh, NIH for funding us for this. I'd like to thank all the people I've had changed the lab and working on this for the last several years. Uh, and most importantly, I'd like to thank those who have been most committed to our research, the uh, mice. <laughs> Thank you.